Much has changed since you struck down the tyrant, Lu Bu. The following years have not been easy. Betrayals, insults, but they will see I am not done. Everyone will yet know my glory. You have risen in defiance of Cao Cao, but he has returned from his campaign and surely intends to suppress your insurrection. Cao Cao is weak, like Yuran Shao and all the rest. He lacks the strength to claim the throne. Be that as it may, he fields a considerable army. Your first move should be to find a defensible position. Yet a protracted siege of Chen will not work to your advantage either. Plague and famine have ravaged the supplies. It may be impossible to defend. What can be done then? Defeat him in open battle? Perhaps. His flanking force approaches. If you defeat them, then it will give you the opportunity to retreat north and regroup. Cao Cao will know my fury in time. They all will. Soon the warrior without equal will prove that his might is beyond even that of the Emperor. Hello, Monsters of Andrew, and welcome to Total War Three Kingdoms, A World Betrayed, the new DLC coming out later on this month for Three Kingdoms. Thank you very much to Creative Assembly for giving me early access and a free key. Uh, so this campaign starts in 194 CE. It gives some new start positions for characters we already know, and it also adds some new characters such as Lu Bu and Sun Su. So what's happened, the situation we're in at the moment is... Dong Zhao is dead by Lu Bu's hands. Now, the problem is that uh, Dong Zhao's armies, a couple of his generals, Go Si and Li Ju, then realise what's happened, rush to the capital with Dong Zhao's armies and basically take the capital. Lu Bu doesn't have the forces to repel them, so Lu Bu then runs away. He shacks up with Cao Cao and uh, then after a little while gets uh, basically antsy and so decides to rebel. Cao Cao then comes back and kicks his ass. So we're running away from Cao Cao at the moment. Uh, so we've got Rebel Without a Cause. My lord, you are undoubtedly the greatest warrior in all of China, but even you must sometimes admit a temporary setback. The rebels who invited you to lead them against Cao Cao have proved wanting and have been unable to provide your armies with supplies you need to capitalise on your successes. Perhaps it is wisest to let Cao Cao reclaim the city of Chen and retreat north where you can replenish. So you need to escape from Chen and replenish your armies, then crush Cao Cao. So there is Lu Bu and... Thank you. And uh, we've got Do Not Pursue, Lu Bu. The next mission is the smug wretch Cao Cao thinks he has you on the run, but he should show he should know better than to corner a tiger, lured by the prospect of easy captives. Cao Cao's lackey Jahadun has been drawn out into the open. Defeating him will give your men the inspiration they need to push on to safer territory. So we need to defeat Jahadun. That's going to give us Rebel Leader, which is going to reduce our character salary and retinue upkeep, which is just as well because we're losing a lot of money. So seize opportunities when they arrive yes indeed so there's Lu Bu himself now Lu Bu starts off at level 9 uh, which means he is pretty fucking potent he is the warrior without equal there is barely anybody here well no you've probably killed them all so he he has massive bonuses to expertise resolve and instinct you can see his instinct is currently uh, 178 out of 200 which is pretty fucking good he also increases melee damage for all shot cavalry by 50% and increases morale when in enemy territory. He starts off with the red hair. Uh, he gets Lubu's armor and also Sky Piercer. So basically, you do not really want to mess with Lubu. Lubu is pretty fucking scary. Uh, what ancillaries do we have? Area. Okay. Jade Archer. And Experts Lever. Nothing that's particularly fantastic, but I guess a little bit of more authority wouldn't hurt. Now, Lubu is a very, very powerful character. His army is very, very strong, which means the first few battles you'll fight are basically cakewalks. They, he, he will murder his way through literally anyone. The problem is not with Lubu's army. It's with building Nature's an empire with Lubu. Is revealed to us once more. Indeed. So you have this slight problem here, chaotic rules. So you have a reduction in administrators, each construction costs 30% extra, and also your corruption is increased by 20%, which is pretty major, really. So, we're going to struggle quite a bit to build an empire. However, 
killing people is not going to be Lubu's problem. Lubu starts off with um, a quite a different little mechanic. He's got momentum, which basically as that increases, you can see we increase satisfaction, increase campaign movement range, melee damage for melee infantry, morale and replenishment. But we also have personal victories. As these increase, we will get bonuses to our post-battle income and prestige. However, we will get reductions in satisfaction and diplomatic attitude with literally everyone. A bit of a problem however we also have greatest warriors so this mechanic here is uh basically you're a highlander you go around kicking the shit out of people and stealing their powers from them so as you defeat these characters you get i mean look 25 percent melee armor piercing damage if you defeat guan yu blazing roar if you defeat the zhang fei more sort of faction if you defeat De Liu Bei, but I guess you get the satisfaction for wiping his face off the, uh, the face of the map. Uh, if you defeat Sun Tzu, you get 15% melee damage. If you defeat Zhang, uh, Zheng Zhang, you get Poisoned Blade, which is really nice. And uh, what else is good? Oh, yes, the low, low turbines. You get Recovery. Recovery if you defeat He Yi. So uh, lots of good stuff to be had there. We start off with having uh, father figures because, of, of course, Lu Bu killed Ding Yuan, his first adoptive father, to join, to join, Dong, to jo join, to join Dong Zhao. And then he killed Dong Zhao as well. Um, basically, if you ever receive a Father's Day card from Lu Bu, run would be the best advice, I think. Um, so we start off with Cao Cao and some of his... There's Jin Yu. Who's this guy? I can't remember who this guy is. Not sure. Doesn't matter. Anyway, they are currently closing in on uh, Chen, our city, while we are retreating north. Now, Zhao Hadun is in the way, as is um, Zhao Yan. Uh, neither of these guys are going to be an issue as we make our way to a farmland. We are going to murder them fairly easily. We start off with uh, Chen Gong here, the Master Magistrate. Now, this guy... This guy was the magistrate that... There is uh, barely anybody here. Yes, I know, Lubu, it's fine. It was is the guy who basically, when Cao Cao tried to assassinate Dong Zhao, failed and ran away, Chen Gong is the magistrate that basically helped him escape and escaped with him. They got to, I think it was Cao Cao's uncle's place, and his uncle then went, oh, brilliant, you're here, fine, that's no problem. I'll go and get some drinks. So he pops off to the, to the town. And uh, while he was doing that, Cao Cao overheard some of it, um, his uncle's retainers talk about how to how to tie knots and slit throats, and basically thought they were after him. So, um, killed them all. Problem is, they were talking about how to um, sacri sac basically like butcher a pig for the meal. So, realizing his uncle wouldn't be best pleased with the mess that he's caused, he they they then escape, and they find his uncle coming the other way, and then Cao Cao stabs his uncle basically because he was like well i mean he'd be a bit pissed off if he found all the mess wouldn't he i mean i guess that's fine anyway chen gong wasn't massively happy about that so left uh sao sao the next opportunity and as you can see he's got a grudge against sao sao yeah that's good uh we also have we start off with some other characters as well if we go to the court we can see we have zhang liao who i definitely want to get in my army asap we have hao meng who is a treacherous rogue that's fun we have dio chan of course and gao uh, shun who is the guy who shot jahadun with an arrow and killed him and you might be thinking wait why is your spouse lady yan and not dio chan that's because dio chan she was a concubine. Uh, Lu Bu was already married at the time that he um, killed his adoptive father ov over her. So that's that's fun. Now, there's a raft of new changes with the patch that's coming with the DLC. Lots of really good stuff. Uh, there's lots of changes to bandits uh, uh, factions. They're really, really good. I can't really talk about those unless we come across them in the campaign. But uh, some fantastic changes for bandit factions. They, they, they feel really different now, which is really good. Um... What else? Population in cities now increases all income. So commerce, industry, and peasantry income now get increased by uh, the population in a city, which is a really nice change because it means there's actually a point to increase population in maybe commerce cities, whereas before you wouldn't really bother. So that's a nice change. Also increases food. Um, the other major change Be open is uh, titles. So you now have a list of titles here. You can you have some to start off with. So like attendant there, you can just give them that. It just increases their salary and uh, gives them extra satisfaction. But there's also something you can unlock, which actually gives bonuses to your characters, which is really, really nice. Some of them very, very potent. I mean, if we have a look at, uh, is it Master of the Hunt? So there we go. Master of the Hunt increases salary by 400, but gives 10 resolve, 10 instinct, enables poison arrows for retinue, 
and a bunch of other abilities, which is really, really nice. Um, so you have different um, requirements to unlock these. So win three battles, uh, win a battle with three generals of the same type present. Win a battle with the enemy has twice as many units as you. Uh, win a decisive or heroic decisive ba defensive battle. Defensive battle, yep. And win a battle where 60% of more of your army consists of ranged units. There we go. So lots of uh, lots of good stuff there. So let's get cracking. No point waiting around. So let's get uh, Lu Bu to go and murder Shahadu. Spoilers. This is going to be over pretty quickly. And we're going to do a night fight. Now, some of the other changes are that morale is now more impactful. So... We have a look at these boys. These boys have only got 34 morale. If we fight at night, that reduces by 15. So uh, these guys are not going to be happy. And killing Jahadun is not going to be hard. Jahadun thinks he's going to get an easy kill here. And uh, rack up some brownie points with uh, Sao Sao. It's, it's a brave play, Cotton. Let's see how it turns out for him. I'm going to be honest, already looking a little bit dicey. Uh, we outnumber him anyway. And uh, his men are... Yeah, they've only got 30 morale. And Jahadun is getting his ass kicked. So no I, I disagree, buddy. I, I really disagree. Our cavalry's moved... Oof. Mm. The enemy general falls. Well, Jahadun is dead. His men are less happy about that. And now my cavalry is closing in. And as my cavalry, the heavy Zhiliang cavalry, slam into the rear of the enemy units, uh, they break and run. Yeah, that didn't take long. Oof. That's going to sting. Victory opens many doors. I did say it was going to be over quickly, didn't I? Uh, now, you've got a heirloom spear, which would be quite nice. I could release you and maybe see if we can pick you up later. Hmm. Um, let's release you. Release them. They are open. Now. We have a different option here. We have maintained momentum, which resets the army's movement points to maximum. It will make us tired, but it will give us some replenishment as well. But that means we can basically just keep moving. So we get Rebel Leader, which reduces character salary and retinue upkeep by 50% and 20% respectively, which is really nice because it means we can act we're actually in the money at the moment. So we've, we have defeated... Uh, Jahadun, which means we get some prestige and also a bonus, which is really, really nice. So if we go and have a look at the Greatest Warrior. So we now get plus five melee evasion for spear infantry. And if we kill this guy, we'll get plus 25 charge bonus for shock and melee cavalry, which of course will be super nice. And he is next on the chopping block. In fact, we'll get reinforcements from our farmland as well. So let's fight at night as we did last time. And shall we just let... Yeah, we'll... we'll We'll give him the personal touch. Yeah, this didn't work out for Jahadun. I don't think it's going to work out for this guy either. No, my Especially story. because Jahadun was a sentinel. Sentinel? No, he was a guardian. No, he was a green, green boy. They've got a lot of health. This guy has less health. In fact, uh, he's... Yeah, he died. <laughs> he died. Okay. Uh, what's left of his army is now desperately charging into my spears. So good job there. And my heavy Gilean cavalry mopping up the survivors. That was nice and easy. Oof. That's gonna leave a mark. This will bear me well. Oh hello there. Caught you as well, did we? Uh family spit. I'm gonna release you as well. If you spare me, I shall return to take my vengeance upon you. Noted. I have little need of prison. Quickly! 
So we are a second Marquis. Very, very nice. And uh, we have knocked out both of them. Got 15 prestige. Thank you very much. I'll take that. Uh, now, we could head south to deal with Chen. However, I'm more interested in going after Zheng Jiang, who is over here. Yuan Shao is over there as well. Uh, so, mm. so, let's... Okay, let, let's do some recruitment. So let's get Zhang Liao in our army. Remain firm. So we'll do some recruitment there. I think that army is fine for the moment. I'm not super desperate to get anything else. I don't think... Ah, uh, we could give you that. It should help out a little bit. I mean, to be honest, Lu Bu is going to do most of the killing anyway. So anything we can do to keep down our costs is um fine i'm just going to go after jeng jang because i really want that uh, poison blade ability i think that would be super nice now uh sao sao and his his little cronies going to capture the city down there but to be honest i'm not going to lose any sleep over that i'm just going to murder my way around china until basically Lu Bu is the strongest thing on two legs I mean, he pretty much already is. So, anyway, Li Ju, apparently, uh, Yang Feng has, has declared war on Li Ju. Fair enough. Lu Bu, uncharacteristically, takes a pause. So, we have uh, recruited a number of units, and that's going to increase our replenishment and bonus experience per season. Uh, it should be noted that experience now has less of an effect on units as they rank up. The idea behind that is it's to stop you relying on militia rather than getting higher ranked units or to at least let higher ranked units defeat militia even if they're like you know pretty elite anyway Sao Sao learns a lesson in humility what little Sao Sao has achieved has been built on the backs of greater men leeches like him have no place in the world show him the meaning of true strength destroy him fair enough now we'll get path of glory more population growth public order and income I mean that'd be nice if we had anyone to rule over. Lu Bu proves himself the saviour of China, so we need to reach the faction rank Marquis. For all his many faults, at least Dong Zhao had the strength to assert his will. With him gone, China falls further into division, torn between petty warlords who can barely control their own lands. The people who need a champion to sweep aside these feeble tyrants and bring about a new age of unity and strength. Prove your martial might and all of China will rejoice in your victories. Trust. Fair enough. Got a clay axe. It's nice. Uh, now, here's something cool. You can now do assignments on enemy settlements. And uh, you can incite unrest. You can scout the province. There's other things you can do. I think those might be the only things you can do. Um, <laughs> but uh, it's, it's a different way of using your spies or your assignments. Um, but what I do want to do is I'm going to send Diochan to Sao Sao because he's my main threat so we're going to send her to go and keep an eye on old Sao Sao and uh, see what he's up to I'm going to wait one turn do I want to wait one turn? yes I do we're going to wait one turn we're going to lose our city that's fine I probably could have fought that and it might have worked but I'm would just not all that invested enemy. You'll give me some money, sign on an aggression pact, and I'll give you a tunic of divinate. Um, uh, I could use the money. All right. Our talks flow as smoothly as the river. Yeah, sure. Get the hell out of here, Leo Liu Biao. You cranky old bastard. I also want to kill He Yi because that would give me that recovery, which would be nice. So we've lost that. Liu Bei formed a coalition with Kong Rong. Fair enough. Okay, let's head in this direction. We, I feel like we, we don't want to waste too much time, mostly because we're losing money all the time. That's fine. Uh, we may as well march because there's no reason to be slow about this. And ah, there you are. There you are. I found you. Now, just stay there. Consider our offer. What do you want? Experts, leather, non-aggression. Uh, yeah, all right. 
We are happy to have pleased you. Yeah, whatever. Not, not that invested. I, don't, I can't get another army at the moment anyway, so I'll worry about that later. I'll worry about arm, uh, armor later. So, Diochan has been dispatched. I'm sure she'll get uh, picked up. Oh, Hao Meng, a treacherous underling. Hao Meng rebels against you. You are caught out and forced to flee in your nightwear. Oh no. But thanks to the loyalty and resolve of your young officer named Cao Jing, the rebellion is quashed. Huh. You, I take it. Loyal sharpshooter. Reduced penalty from desire of office, more satisfaction, and plus 25% range damage just for you, I guess. Who knows? Um, sure. I mean, sure. You are pretty happy, but I could make you the Grand Commandment. Shall we do that? Let's do that. Let's pop you in there. It's going to cost a little bit of money, but I think we're fine. Obey the heart. Right. Put them down. Let's to battle. kill you. We're going to fight at night. Yes, you've got reinforcements. But we've got Lu Bu, so I th think that evens it out quite nicely. The previous two battles were over pretty quickly. This one might be a little bit trickier. Zheng Jiang has got quite a few units at her disposal, and she does not want to duel. She Maybe she heard what happened to uh, the other guys, and she's like, nope. Don't want to fight that. Libu charging straight ahead into the spike. Sees it on the last second. Dodges around them. Good job there. The rest of his guys trying to catch up with him. But uh, Lubu is a one-man army. So bop. Gives Zheng Zheng a little poke. Coming back. Another little poke. Gets stuck in against the uh, hidden axes. Decides to attack a barricade. Because why not? You know. I mean, he's he's just mur he's how many kills has he got so far? Forty six. Yep, <laughs> that'll do. They charge in to surround him. He then uses his uh, is it smouldering fury ability, where basically he windmills and then murders everyone. He's now got one hundred twenty five kills. Not bad. So there's Lu Bu. Uh, we've also got two other generals which we haven't really had a look at yet. So there's Zhang Liao. He's good, he's got a raw ability. And uh, Chen Gong, who is our strategist, who has a, a, like an aura which produces armor and melee evasion, which is very, very useful. So basically, we stick him near the enemy army and uh, he makes it easier to kill everyone. Zhang Liao has a raw which will reduce enemy morale by 18. Uh, 18, that's it. Now, these guys don't have much morale, so when Zhang Liao charges in and roars at them, these guys are just going to get the fuck out of dodge. Zhang Liao has managed to basically rout the enemy army in one fell swoop. And he's also going to go and deal with this guy, whatever is, is the, the enemy sentinel. Take him out. Good job. So far, so good. Our cavalry is moving in from the flanks. We've got heavy Zhiliang cavalry moving in. Uh, there's some spears over here, which we're going to have to be a little bit careful of. And Lu Bu is continuing to try and hunt down Zheng Zhang. She is refusing to engage him in combat. Which marks her has incredibly, certainly more sensible than uh, the previous two generals that we dealt with. Unfortunately, she just she's just taking so much damage. She is going to get away, and Lu Bu is up to 289 kills. Lu Zheng, which is Zheng Jiang's sister, is coming into. I don't know what she's doing. Maybe trying to sort of like just keep an eye on things, trying to help. I don't. Is she actually going to try and get stuck in? Jesus Christ, he took a swing. That's brave. That is very brave. Yeah, a little bit too brave. Yeah, you're you're yeah, she's running. She's running. Zhang Liao finishing off the enemy sentinel. Do not waste your breath. You will need it. Oof. You'll need a new head. Because that that one, you've lost that one. Our oh, boys fighting against the uh, fists of the bandit queen. These guys are quite nasty to deal with in melee. 
They've already racked up 84 kills. And Lu Bu is continuing to chase Lu Zheng. However, Zheng Xiang comes back to the fight. And uh, Lu Bu has spotted her. She seems quite unconcerned about the oncoming threats. Our victory grows ever closer. Guess it'll poke there. She's down to seven and a, seven and a half thousand health. Some of our Gilian cavalry coming. Oh, no, oh, she she dead. She dead. Right, Jin Jang's down. It's another notch on the old uh, halberd. And with Zheng Jiang's death, the last remnants of the bandit army fade away. I still heroic victory there. Another knot to my bow. And Jing Jiang is out of here. Do you want to raise it for three momentum? Sack and withdraw? Loot and occupy. I mean, it's a temple, so... Does anyone... Nah, screw it. Loot and occupy. So we have defeated Zheng Zhang. Look at that. And we've got Poison Blade. And Zheng Zhang's dead. Gone. She's going to be seriously shitty about that. Got a brown stallion and master of the hunts. Uh, we're... Uh, in a battle where one of your characters present has a rival that was among the defeated characters. Who was that? Wasn't paying attention. Never mind. It's not a big deal. Uh, can we give you the brown horse? There we go. I guess have that because that will cheer you up a little bit. Momentum has increased massively. Look at that. Battles won. Very, very nice. Uh, so 20 satisfaction and 15% campaign movement range. That's good. And we've got a temple. It's a little bit damaged. Never mind. We'll we'll pop that back up. We'll get a nice temple there. I don't think the people here are very happy right now. Um, well, they seem okay. Right. So, we've got Lu... Oh, now. Ooh, do we go after Lu Chong? I'm thinking yes, because we could secure some territory down here. Now, Cao Cao is, is going to be a bit of a grump. We don't. Well, we do have some food, but we, we need money. We need to secure some income before seven turns is up. Because at that point, we are suddenly everything's going to cost more. I also need to increase my satisfaction. But I think with the momentum increasing, that should, should stop that. Which is just as well. Because at the moment, we've got 35% corruption. Attention. Which isn't great. Um, do we want to go after... Leo Bay next. Because if we knock out Leo Bay, we'll get 25 prestige and 5 satisfaction from doing that. And we'll also get 25% melee, blazing roar, and even more satisfaction and prestige for doing this. And we'll be become immune to fear and terror. Sure, why not? And uh, I guess this is defeating ah, Sun Xuan, Sun Ren, and Sun Se. Okay, um, if we knock out all of these guys, we'll get the de guerrilla deployment. But I think we've already got that, so I'm not quite sure if that's actually useful. Um, but we need to knock out the new bandits general, Yan Bayu and Zhang Yan as well. That increases our post-battle income. That's quite nice to have. Uh, is there anything else? I would like to knock out the yellow turbines, because that recovery ability would be super nice. Oh, so that would also count towards doing some of this as well. That's interesting. Okay, so some of these guys are in more than one doobie doo. Okay, so basically we're just going to kill as many as possible and make Lubu the most terrifying thing on two legs. But that is going to have to wait until next time. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.